Get the finger guns, Mario. Pew pew. It's rubber fire. Pew. I will say this. It is great. Tony the Tiger, great to be back in the dark. It is, isn't it? Yep. I do miss it. I do miss it. And, you know, when it comes in, when we get into season, obviously the car is not feasible. What? Nice Under Armour. You pitching a double header today? <laughs> Listen, it's under 80 degrees outside. I need to retain as much body heat as possible. This engine runs at a thousand calories an hour. Okay. Finely tuned donut machine over here. Don't you question me. If Duncan and Tim Horton and Paul has had a threesome and spawned a child in the view. Fact. <laughs> Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. My stepmom would be Wendy's. <laughs> no, that's my mistress. Wendy's is my mistress. Yeah, Wendy's is the mistress because you love those pigtails. You sicko. <laughs> He's got to clean his glasses up. A little foggy here for you, buddy. It's getting a little steamy in here. All right, rapid fire. Um, we'll start. We'll just start from the top and work our way down. That's fine. Uh, face of the bear. Talk about uh, how they would have never what? That's what she said. Are we gonna film an episode today? <laughs> Face of the bear, what's up, buddy? I feel like, I feel like we're uh, in the movie Tommy Boy, where they've got the gas leak in the back. <laughs> Throw it. That was Throw not. It. Uh, that was black sheep. That was black sheep. Yep. Now they kind of melt together. Because when he goes, really tough to sell. You know how fast you're going? <laughs> I get it up to about uh, 85 when I'm chasing a cute chicken up Ferrari. But I'll say 65 times. Seven. You are going seven miles an hour. <laughs> And usually when I pull somebody over, they go to the side of the road. <laughs> All right, face of the bear. Talk about how they would never have taken a running back because of how much they like, uh, a, how much they like big men. Uh, I mean, we talked about this a little bit during the, the draft episode. Um, a little bit on pack there. Yeah, a little bit. Um, I think running back is a pre running back. I don't think Buffalo sees as a premium position. Defensive end, offensive tackle. They see oh, yeah. it as a premium position. Absolutely. So if those players are on their board with a running back, that that doesn't the they're gonna they're gonna stay true to their board. Like yes. if a running back was all that was left on their board, they would have traded out. Like I'm convinced. They would have traded Probably. out. Probably. I mean you can't teach size, can't teach speed. No. Uh, both the running backs that were the first round draft that were gone. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I mean I'm fine with it. Uh, I'm a I'm a huge Breida fan. I think he was misused in Miami. Um, I think, you know, you you made an investment in the running backs right now, and don't you think it's a little bit of a culture issue to just keep reinventing that position every year? Like at some point, yeah. you have to look at your locker room and say, this is probably not the best investment well, of yeah. our resources. Well, no, I mean, if we talk about the running back position, I'm just looking at it right now, we have stated many times that if this was a different system. Moss and Singletary would be more valuable to a different type of system than the EP. Yeah. And because of their role in the offense, it would be, to me, it's like, let's say you have a small patch of grass. You live in the city, you got a small patch of grass. Mm -hmm. And it's like buying a riding lawnmower. Like, right. Why would you do that for just a small patch of grass? You right. would. Right. Talk about, uh, let's see, Green Bastard. Green Bastard? I just read the names, guys. That's pretty mean there, Banner. Talk about how underrated taking two DEs in the draft is. Jerry Hughes and Addison are in their 30s, and this is a long-term investment. Um, I'll let you start that one. I think we, we covered this uh, earlier this week. This might have been on the Sunday episode. But, I mean, we have mentioned many times on the draft episodes when we were analyzing the, dra the recent drafts, 
Oliver, they got younger at the position. Mm -hmm. Edmonds, they got younger at the position. Uh, and Allen, they needed, obviously, needed a quarterback. But then right. you talk about Trey White, certain draft things that happens, they get younger at the position and they're able to get the best player on the board for that position. And the NFL, I never want to talk about the salary cap being a mess. It, it's just as much business as it is on the field. Mm -hmm. So that's a business decision. By doing that, you cover yourself for both the loss of Addison and Hughes mm -hmm. next year, and you're able to allocate that money that if you decide to you know, part – I mean, Hughes is already gone anyway next year. But, like, if you part ways with Addison, you're able to use that money toward Allen and Edmonds. Well, I think the reason that I was so staunch against drafting a defensive end in the first round was because oftentimes the value just isn't there if you're not in the top ten. Like, it's yeah. just the value's not there. I will say it. Ten ways till Sunday. The last five years of the draft tells you that unless you're taking a defensive tack or defensive end in the top ten picks, they're not worth picking until in the second round. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's that's the value. But what did we see in this draft? We didn't see a defensive player go in the top ten. Right. No. So I, again, I think this all kind of plays into the fact that or two did. No, no defensive players went in the top ten. Are you serious? The yeah, entire top off, ten. The entire top ten was all off. Oh, I thought there was a couple. No, no defensive player went in the top ten. So because of that, right, you see that value slipped down. Buffalo probably got who they thought was the second best defensive end on the board. So, sure. They got right? the second one from Miami. They got, right. <laughs> yeah. No, but Not real hard to scout, is I, it? <laughs> the, the thing that we always harp on, like, we didn't make the connection. And I'm upset that we didn't make the connection with the fact that a defensive end in a McDermott system, Frazier system, you don't have to get a top 10 defensive end. You don't. you don't. So if you get one at 30, he'll serve your purpose. He'll actually be better for the system itself. Well, and again, another reason why, again, I don't think we made the connection that defensive end was so high on their priority list to have addressed it twice was they've been so happy just to dip into the free agent market. Yeah, you extended right. Hughes. You, you got Addison. You right. got Murphy. Right, you exactly. I mean? they, and, yes, they went and got Epinesa, but that was a true need pick. They needed to draft a defensive end. Like, that no. was not I – don't, I don't believe that this falls into the same category as what we saw in 20. That gave you the financial stability that if Epineza was ready by week two, week three, week four, you could walk away from the um, the Murphy deal. Right. But you couldn't because he wasn't ready yet. Right. Yeah, exactly. All right, Matt Ronkowski, uh, talk about the free agents and the draft picks going into their second, third, and fourth year and what this team could look like if three or four of these players make another step uh, forward without, uh, or whether it be untapped potential chemistry or just knowing their responsibilities better. So, talking about the draft class we had last year, entering their second, third, and fourth year. So, the last few draft class, how much does their development matter to the Buffalo Bills in 2021. Oh, huge! Number one, I mean, I think, I think Diggs will do well. Um, well, he was their first round pick. Their first <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Well, you, well, you had Diggs, Epineza, and Moss. Yeah. You're talking about Hodges, Davis. Am I missing somebody? Yeah, we're missing someone. The fourth round pick. Did they, did they have a fourth round pick? You want to pull it up? No, they did. It's not live. We're good. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> we forgot from. <laughs> huh. um, okay, so uh, Epineza, Moss, Davis, Crom, Bass, Hodgins, and Dave Jackson. Okay, I think we take Bass out of it because kickers are in their own category. He, right. He progressed nicely throughout the year. Crom is a non factor. Crom is just your insurance policy for something that catastrophic happens. Right. But you got Hodges and Davis. Davis. Development, he still has to develop. He's, yeah, I think people are really high on him, yeah. and I think there's a good reason for that, but I think people are expecting him to be your wide receiver, too, this year. I don't expect him to catch 85 passes. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah, no. I'm, not, I'm not really there. I think you still need to kind of be careful about your expectations at that position. If he catches four a game. I'm That's a good that. number. I'm fine with that. That's a good number. Um, so then you have Hodges, who is untapped potential. Another right. development no player. idea. You don't know. Yeah. Um, Epineza. I mean, he's, he's, he seems primed to fill that role that, that, um, that Murphy had on that side. Well, I but think, you do have two crazy maniac defensive ends. I think Epines is going to be fighting for snaps a little bit against Rousseau. Like, you, you expect 
Epines is a start over Rousseau in rotation. Initially. In rotation. But that's not the goal. No. You know, you'd expect Epinesa to slide over where Addison is, right? That's that's kind of if you're looking at fitting types, yeah. Hughes to Rousseau, right? Addison to every other defensive end on the team. Well, I think right? what what Rousseau you talk about the difference between Rousseau and Epineza. I mean, we're, we're, we're kind of getting off a tangent, but as far as... I think they have more versatility on the defensive line this year than they, they have in previous years. Yeah. I think they I have more that. guys that can do more things on that defensive front than they've had in the past three years, which yep. is something that they needed. Yeah. You know what I mean? We were talking about the offensive line versus the defensive line. The offensive line, you kept intact exactly yep. the way they are. Mm-hmm. But you did draft two tackles. Yep. And you got a guard, too. Right? Yep, they did so, grab a guard. Um, and so now you look at the defensive side, they got younger. They got a little bit more wider of a, of a set to be to kind of conform a little bit more to the new NFL, mm-hmm. more passing, all this other stuff. So I think that they're going to be fine. The development of Epineza, though, he's more of that bookend guy. Mm-hmm. Rousseau is going to go kill somebody. Yeah. Well, that's so, why I said yeah, no, sorry, Hughes, yeah. to, Hughes to Rousseau, Addison to everybody else. Yes. Okay. Um, Dane Jackson, I think, is being banked on for a big year. He just has to be. You look at the options at the position, you just – Unless the Bills sign... Is this wishful thinking? No. No, it's not wishful are you, thinking. Are you the king Unless of the... wishful thinking? <laughs> That's a great song, by the way. <laughs> song, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can judge me for all you want. That's a great song. Um, you can get down to that song in 1992. Or 2021. It okay. doesn't matter. So, Moss's development. Play that in an NFL locker room. You'll see people dancing. I guarantee you'll see people dancing. All right. Yeah, McDermott. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine Sean McDermott actually having fun doing something? I like something? this one. I like yeah. this one. How do you dance like this? <laughs> uh, okay. Why are these the longest episodes ever? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I, I do want to talk about one other thing. Maybe later in the week, maybe the episode will be before this, but the compensatory formula, what you do from here, I think that's kind of a big topic. I I just want to, I think it's probably prime to talk about. Dean Jackson falls into a position that could be impacted by players who are no longer eligible for the compensatory formula. So I think that all that matters. Yes. So, um, okay. Uh, Ed Oliver, Cody Ford, Devin Singletary, Dawson Knox, Moshan Joseph, RIP. Um, his career's over. It's been over since he got cut. Uh, Jaquan Johnson, Daryl Johnson, and Tommy Sweeney. Wow. Other than Oliver, Singletary, and Johnson. Johnson. And Johnson? Yeah. Okay. Oliver, Singletary, and Johnson. I, okay. I, I mean, Oliver is your first round pick. He's defensive yeah. tackle. Right. Um, Ford, question marks about him. We well, haven't really he's seen just it. drafted three offensive linemen. True. And then they signed like eight of them. Singletary, he's still your guy because you didn't you didn't do anything with the position. You still have Moss, right? Um, Knox, you didn't do anything with the position. No, but uh, he's still your guy. I don't see, I don't see because I'm I'm looking at it as second contracts with these guys. Yeah, I don't see a second deal for Ford. I no, don't, I don't see a second deal for Knox. No, uh, at this point, no. Sweeney, he'll no. be a practice squad guy. Then he'll be cut. I mean, not that I want that for him. I don't even know. He had a tough year last year. He did. So you look at a lot of those other names, though. You're like, they got. I think they brought you. They last year was uh, that 2019 squad was a squad that could come in and play for you right now if they had to. That's I think the the approach that they went was let's go get guys who can play tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I think you learn your lesson from that. You take your lumps. Everybody talks about how great Bean is at drafting. And, yeah, when you can draft players and they can come in and play for you immediately, Tommy Sweeney did have a pretty decent-sized role in 2019. Daryl Johnson was a nice uh, practice squad player, ended up being a special teams player for you. Jaquan Johnson has stuck around but really made minimal impact. Oshan Joseph, you cut. Dawson Knox ended up starting for you. Devin Singletary started for you. Cody Ford started for you. Ed Oliver started for you. So if you're just looking at players that started the year they were drafted. And you went 10-6. and six. The Bills did pretty decent. But long term, maybe not the best approach. Yes. Okay. 
So I think you start quickly running out of players that you that you can call dependable because once you get into 2018, Harrison Phillips, I don't expect him to be re-signed. Teron Johnson, Maybe. the injury issues are the problem. Sierra Neal, no. Wyatt Teller's already gone. Ray Ray McLeod's already gone. Austin Cole's already gone. So, yeah. um, you know, I think it gets thinner and thinner. You're always more optimistic about the most recent drafts, but I really do feel the Bills have figured out how to get that nice mix of guys who can play for you right now and guys who you're willing to take the time to develop. The more talent that you get, <clears throat> obviously the more swings you could take at developmental talent. Yeah. Because, hey, you know, you know, could could Rousseau sit out the entire 2021 season and be okay? Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. You have right. the position covered. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think – I think that's a dangerous game, though, because once you start betting too much on developmental talent, what if they, happens? If they don't develop, I understand Your, your team falls apart. No, no, I know, I, I know that, but the point is you had the, all those names that you mentioned. They had yep. to play. Yep. Which rookie will have the biggest impact right away? Steven asked that. What rookie has the biggest impact right away? Well, that's the, the easy answer is the first round pick. Yeah, Russo. Now, mind you, we're saying you say that, oh, it's easy, and we know he's only going to play 40% of snaps. But, yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, oh, that's clearly the Is this the percentage answer. of plays played? Right. Um, I, I don't think the Bills needed this draft the way that other teams needed this draft. Yes. So I think it'll be harder to find high-level rookie impact. Read the read the question again. Which rookie will see? Well, which rookie will uh, we see have the biggest impact right away? The two tackles and the guard will have the most impact on this because team. they're going to control the rest of the roster. Those three guys being drafted sent a wake up call to the current line. I agree with that. So you're going to see those maniacs up front play the best that they're going to play yeah. because they know. Yeah, they're going to be playing scummy football. Exactly. That's so going to be what happens. Those guys that are currently starters that got re-signed, they're like, okay, I got re-signed. I'm back with the Bills. Yep. We went 13-3. and Let's go. They drafted who? Two tech. All right, I'm going back to the gym today. The only one that didn't get replaced was Morris. And he's – we joke about it all the time, but he's one hit away from drinking everything through a straw. His replacement playing next to him. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Who's the – um? Who's the other guy they brought in? They brought in another free agent to sign. Lamp? The Lamp. Lamp. We'll leave the light on for you. He's got his own line of lamps. It's phenomenal. For Good for him, Lamps.com. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Stephen Collins. Uh, who makes their developmental squad? Expanded practice squad. We Huge. Talked, that's a big deal. Huge. Right? You can protect four players. Yep, you can protect four players. Um, even with that being said... Uh, you're going to see a large mix of the players in this draft. The Bills are going to end up cutting probably picks five through the rest of the draft. It usually happens. Yeah. Well, That's so not they, a surprise. Right. So. This is going to be a hard team to make. The Bills have not actually expanded their rosters because remember last year um, when the offseason program had to go in the tank? The, yeah. the NFL sent out a memo saying all rosters have to be at 80. Even though they were supposed to be at 90, the NFL said, yeah, I get down to 80 players. So the Bills ended up cutting Antonio Williams. They had to cut some other players, mm -hmm. right? Ended up getting Antonio Williams back, but the Bills wouldn't have cut Antonio Williams and these other players had the league not told them to get down to 80. Yeah. The league hasn't clarified how many players they're allowed to have at the facility yet. So you're with me right now, right? So Buffalo has to be very careful with how they're approaching, you know, these players that are, you know, out there and available right now because you don't want to sign somebody and then go, all right, well, we just got to cut these one of, we got to cut three of these guys we just signed a month ago because, you know, the league says we got to get, we can only bring in 85 players. Yeah. So Buffalo is being very cautious with that, which, which is smart, right? But it does give you more flexibility because I think Buffalo carries a lot of favor in the offseason program. With that being said, those eight, ten players that the Bills haven't signed yet, that's also a full practice squad. So, like, really tough to call who that developmental team will be. I would anticipate anybody's drafted round five through who will be cut. That's not something that's singular to the Bills. No. They, yeah, I agree. They have that luxury. Yeah. What the hell was that? Jesus. Let me...
just ran over something. That was nuts. Uh, one thing that did get brought up, Donnie Brook had mentioned the vaccinations in the league. Um, mm -hmm. So it was mentioned, Brandon Bean did mention that they might cut players who are unvaccinated, which is a slippery slope, right? The staff, in order to be close to the players, have to be vaccinated. If you want direct player contact, you have to be vaccinated. It's not an option. Mm -hmm. You want a direct player contact role, you have to be vaccinated. Players still have the option, but the NFL has talked about mandating a certain number of rostered players to be vaccinated. So we could talk all day about, you know, being like cut players who are unvaccinated. In context, he's right. The league may mandate the percentage of vaccinated players required on your roster. So he's right. He may have to cut some players if they're unvaccinated and if they refuse to get vaccinated. I think that gives that gives teams, and that's why the CBA. Uh, no, that's why the Players Association hates that. Right. Is because you can cut a player, and then say, "Well, it's because you're not vaccinated." Mm -hmm. You can cut him for any reason. Yeah, right? I know that's what I'm saying. Oh, but you're like, oh, you're, we're gonna. But if but, you're if you're a player, and it's like, okay, we're gonna cut you unless you get this vaccine. I mean, that's several hundred thousand dollars in a decision point. Yeah. That shot's worth several hundred thousand dollars for you. I mean, what what do you do? If you're really against it, what do you do? If that's the choice that's put in front of you. Because if you're unvaccinated and that's the reason you got cut, man, that's tough. Yeah, it, it's a slippery slope, right? Because it's just, it's litigation city because you, you really can't mandate that vaccine. You know, like you can't really cut players for it either. So it's a, it's a slippery slope, man. Um, but the NFL is talking about making, and the NFL would not be immune to making rules for their employment that are not rules in real life. No. The NFL would not be, this Goodell? would not be a novel concept. Goodell, no. Yeah. yeah, no. He's the, the beacon of oh, morality. no. I don't beacon believe of morality. that. Oh. Another half hour rapid fire. Oh, I love it.